You love oh. it. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah. Very good. Very, very impressive. Maybe Why on earth good. do you know the songs if you hate it so much? Next door neighbour. Next door neighbour. She was a dozy old cow. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, oh, look at here all the night. Misery. <laughs> she, was, she took great pride in asking me to go and see the show. Oh, you've got to come and sit. And of course, I had to go and do that it awkward is. thing of standing around backstage, going, "Well done. Oh, you, were you a cat? Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Lovely purring action. Mm. Did you have a furball after watching it? <laughs> a furball sounds like the after-show party. Yeah, it is. You, you have a, a furball. <laughs> Uh, the show features many characters, including Grizabella, the glamour cat, Gus, the theatre cat, McCavity, the mystery cat, and, of course, Ferdy, the frisky feline, uh, who spayed at the end of Act One and spends all of Act Two sitting quietly with a bemused expression on its face. <laughs> Two points to Sue and Stephen there. Fantastic. Now, given that Dave has already given us his love it or loathe it in a previous show in the series, we're going to allow Chris to have a go this week. So, Chris, what have you selected to love and to loathe? The film Amelie. Ah, the French film. OK, and are you going to begin by loving or loathing? We're going to begin by loathing it. OK, head off. I loathe the fabulous destin of Amelie Poulain, to give it its French title. Uh, it is it's sickly beyond measure. Everything about it is overly quirky. Every time something happens, you can just see the writer sitting down and thinking, what, what I need to, is something charming but out of left field, something that, uh, that nobody's really expecting. Audrey Tattoo is the kind of girl, woman, actress, person in their own right, that, uh, <laughs> that, that geeky boys like me used to dream about when we were filing our NMEs in our bedrooms alone. You know, but, but, Eve, but Amelie is such a wet character that she manages to make Audrey Tattoo unattractive, which is an astonishing uh, achievement. It's sickly, it's cloying, it's overly quirky, it likes itself a bit too okay, much. Okay, I'm going to bring the guillotine like in there. Is filing our enemies a new euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> I was with you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, Let's yeah. flip the coin here. Okay. Uh, I now require you to love this film. I love Emily, I think it is a glorious film. I think it's sweet in a way that things just aren't really sweet these days, at the same time as having a little bit of, of sourness underneath it, just to, just to kind of leaven what's going on. It's like, if I may compare it to a biscuit, it's like a hobnob. A hobnob works because of the salt within it. If it were all sweet, it would work it'd be awful biscuit. But it works beautifully because it has the salt <laughs> playing against the sweetness. So it is with Amelie and the little darkness about the mental illness of her neighbour, about the terrible lives of some of the people in her building, and about her own kind of rigidity brought about by uh, her strange parents, her neurotic mother and her... Are these her, plain um, hobnobs or chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> chocolate hobnobs are the devil's work. They are simply gilding the lily, oh, Sandy. Oh, OK. Uh, Which is another euphemism, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, it stars uh, Audrey Tartu, who's, uh, who's the ish in issue of the enemy I've had to file most uh, in my life. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what biscuit is it? Is it a love it or loathe it biscuit? I think you, I, I personally think you can't stand it. Well, I'm, I'm, I disagree too. because I think you would actually love it. I do think so. I think he'd, I don't know, I think he loathes it. I think he'd find it too one-dimensional and saccharine and biscuit, cho chocolatey biscuity box. You're the team captain, mm. right? And so far I've won most of the points, so, uh, <laughs> over to you. Pressure's on. You loathe it. Okay. Well, Sue? He loves it. <laughs> well done! <laughs> Two points to Chris and Dave. <laughs> Amelie is the story of a waitress who sets out to transform the lives of those around her for the better. Oh, she could make a start by bringing out the main course while it's still hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the end of that round, I can tell you that Chris and Dave have got five points, but Sue and Stephen are just in the lead with six. So, with Sue's team leading and Chris's trailing, we finish with losing the plot. In this final round, captains must communicate the plot of a work of literature, film or song to their teammates without mentioning any names or places or referring to the title in any way. Sue and Stephen are in the lead and so they get to start. Here is your envelope, please. 
And your 90 seconds starts now. Um, the positive, uh, the negative, and the minging. Uh, it's a western. Uh, uh, um, the good, bad, the, the ugly. Um, she cuts his hair off, he loses his power. Oh, I know this one. It's like a fairy tale. It's, um, oh, what the <laughs> hell's it? Um, he's, oh a big, he's a big fella, very, very tall. He thinks all his strength is doing his hair. Not Hercules, not Hercules, Hercules my one. darling. Oh, Help me here. Yes. Don't laugh at me! There's a guy, a big Welsh guy, wears a truss, sings a song. <laughs> my, my, my. <laughs> Tom Jones, for the love of God. Oh, Tom Jones, yes. Yes, he no. sings it. Why, oh. why, 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 thank you. Help me. <laughs> Help me. I'm a zombie. What time do I come out? Is that morning time? What, just as the sun is rising? You want me to do my killing work just then at... Thriller. Not that either. <laughs> oh, hang on. Is that the a mummy. cock crowing? Because the it's... Mummy. Okay, Rory. yes. Rory. Uh, if I were, if my surname was Porter and I took my clothes off on Channel 4, my first name would be... Gail. No! <laughs> Dawn! Dawn! Of Dawn. the dead! Dad. Hello, I work at a radio station in Battle Torn, 1960s Southeast Asia. Kate Aidy. I won an Oscar for this, possibly. It's Good Morning Vietnam. <laughs> I'm changing. Are you down? No, I'm up. Hang on, if you're not low, you're... It's high noon. So, <laughs> I fancy being uh, not alive sometime in the p.m. It's death in the afternoon. <laughs> Let's go later on in the day. <laughs> I really think only the good, the bad and the ugly deserves a point. I, I like Good Morning Vietnam and you said Kate Aidy. You've got seven, uh, so yeah. you guys need to get... Uh, we get three. If we get you three? need to get three correct, oh. yeah. so, Which actually is worrying. Yeah, yeah. Right? Your 90 seconds starts now. Okay. Um, uh, um, a scientist works out a way of transporting people by uh, tele teleportation, uh, um, but he gets mixed up with a kind of... Um, uh, 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 metamorphosis. Uh, well, um, it's very intellectual of you, Dave, but it's, uh, it's uh, a little more than that. It was remade in the 1980s. It was a classic uh, horror of the, the 50s. The Fly? Yeah. Um, uh, the next one is the last... <laughs> the next one is the last thing you said. Uh, metamorphosis. Yep. Uh, <laughs> set in New York in the 1960s, it is about a girl who's come up from the country. Uh, she meets uh, Hannibal from the A Team, uh, and uh, they go on the run together. D no, oh, wait. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the next one is a bunch of teenagers. Uh, are I don't care. We've got three now. Yeah, no. I know. All right. Okay, no, let's no, 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 no. All right. I'm not oh, right. Allow... <laughs> sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I'm not going to allow breakfast at <laughs> Tiffany's because you used a real name. What did I say? Hannibal. The game Hannibal. is on. Real names, mate. The game is on. A bunch of teenagers <laughs> doing. Shut up. Doing, doing uh, the detention Lombard, yeah. in the morning in school in America. Uh, girls, the Breakfast Club. That's right. That's right. Uh, now we've uh, now no can dance. Okay. Uh, the next one is um, a well-known uh, novel from the 1950s. In which, uh, right. I will allow the fly. I will allow metamorphosis. I'm afraid for the Breakfast Club. You said America. You said it's uh, that means that a means bit previous. A bit previous. That means it's a time. <laughs> this has been the very calm What the Dickens. I've been Sandy Toxvig and I'm off to see the singer who won last year's X Factor. He's a waiter at a very nice little Italian restaurant, I know. Uh, I'll see you there. Good night.